Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be customizing the notebook template. It's a template for Framer made for freelancers and the best thing is that it's free so if you need it, if you don't have a copy of it already, click the link in the description and you can get it for completely free. Um, it features a few pages, it has a few different sections we can customize, um, it also has a dark and a light mode, so it's a pretty cool template. Um, and by the way, this video is going to be structured into different parts, so you can skip around with the timestamps in the description to the part that you want to see. Um, and with that out of the way, let's get started with customizing it. Uh, once you get the template, you should see this screen. So here all you have to do is click copy project to my account and wait for it to load up. Um, the first thing that we're going to be customizing is the colors, but before we get into that, one thing that I want to mention um, is that if you're completely new to Framer, I would highly suggest for you to check out our Framer Basics tutorial. I will leave a link for it in the description. Um, there you will learn how to move around on the page, how to change images, how to change text, and just simple stuff like that. Um, but of course, if you have experience with Framer, you can uh, just follow along this video. Um, so first thing, let's actually customize the colors. So um, the easiest way to do that would be to go to the Assets tab. And then when you scroll down, you will see that here we have our color styles. Um, so we do have only one colorful uh, color style, which is the accent color. And you can very easily change this by simply changing the color here. So for example, if I want it to be red, I can just slide it over and pick this color. Let's say we want it to be a little more on the pink side. Um, so this is how we can change the, the color. And this is applicable to all colors. So the dark color, I can even change this. Let's say I want it to be more on the blue side and kind of like darker like here and then dark elevated. Um, we're going to leave it as is, but you get the point. The first thing to customize is the colors and you can do it with the assets. If something for some reason is not changing its color and it's not the color you want it to be, you can simply select that element, scroll down on the right side and then change the color here manually or pick uh, one of the color styles that we have um, to change the um, color of the backgrounds of the sections what you have to do is just select the section go to the layers tab make sure you're selecting the main section and then from here let's say you want this second section to be white you can add a fill color you can make it white and uh, one issue that we're facing here is that if we preview the site you will see that the white does not go full width this is because uh, this layer has a max width of 1200 now we do not want to remove that uh, instead, what we have to do is actually select this layer, right click and then just click add stack. This will add another stack on top of it that on top of it that will not have a max width. And now if we add a, um, another color here and if we preview the site, you will see that now it's completely full width. So this is how you change um, colors for the backgrounds. Okay, so next up, uh, let's change the actual navigation. Uh, now, uh, the notebook template comes with a typography logo, so it's very easy to change the logo. Let's say your name is a TO like mine, you can simply type in your name and plug it in here. But if you have an image logo, what you have to do is just simply drag it into Framer. So give me a minute to do that. So I have just dragged in an image logo and um, all you have to do to insert it into the template is select it, click Control or Command X to cut it and then click on the actual logo here and then click Control or Command V to paste it. And then you can delete the other logo and just like that you have inserted your logo. You might have to change its sizing holding down Shift um, to not break its aspect ratio but I would leave it like this um, and this is how you customize the navigation if you want to change the links you can simply double click change the word add in a new link here let's say it's a get started page or whatever else if you want to add more links simply select one of them and then click Control or command D to duplicate it and then here you can add in another link and then just link it to whatever you want to link it to um, and to change the link of the button, click on it once. And on the right side here, you have the navigation CTA component. We have three uh, properties. We have links. So here you put your link. You have the title. So this is what it says. 
let's call it get started and then you can make it open a new tab or not so this is how we customize the navigation uh, next up we have the buttons so um, the buttons it's pretty simple it's just what we did on the navigation select the button you want to edit and then on the right side we have four properties here because we also do have an icon so the title again is the text the icon is the actual icon so here if we let's say if you want an arrow or if you want like um, you know calendar you can just type it in um, and by the way uh, this is phosphor icon so guys if you want to see the actual icons that these guys have you can go to phosphor icons on google uh, click the link and then explore the icons check the name and just paste it in here and you will uh, see the exact icon uh, displayed uh, we have the link you can check the link and then same thing for the secondary button if you want to change the styling of these buttons you have to double click them because they are components and from here you can let's say you don't want this phosphor icon you can simply click it and delete it now the button will be way simpler um, you can also edit the hover effect for example if you want it on hover not to be this dark text color you can actually pick the accent and then if we go back home and if we preview this now if we hover um, the button actually turns pink so uh, this is how you customize the buttons same thing on the secondary um, outline button okay next up we have the client logos so the client logos again we're using a component so you have to double click it and then um, to edit those it's again pretty simple but i would ask you to follow the tutorial um, so if you don't need any of these logos you can simply select them and delete them and then simply drag and drop your new logos onto the framework canvas which i will do right now okay so i have just dragged in three logos just for illustration purposes you might notice that some of them are huge, some of them are small. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna align them right here on the grid. This big one, we will select it, we'll hold down shift and then we will size it down so it looks proportional to the other logos. Um, if we zoom in, um, I might make this a bit smaller as well. And then maybe this a bit bigger and let's try slightly bigger and now once you have your logos aligned and looking good all you have to do is select this purple rectangle and then here you have these three dots click on them hold it down and then just connect it to the logos one mistake we made is that these logos before we can connect them we actually have to frame them so select the logo right click and click add frame this will add a background we'll go to the right side and we will click the x here to remove it and now we'll do the same procedure on all of the logos we just added so one here and one here and now if we do the same thing drag it connected you will see that it connects the logos we just added and if we go back to home and if we play the site you will see that now we have our actual logos playing here and infinitely spinning okay next up we have the recent projects now this you won't be able to edit it um, straight away in the framework canvas this is because this is actually a cms collection and um, to edit the cms collection you obviously have to go to the cms menu and here we have three cms um, items we have projects we have experience and we have blog um, to edit the projects obviously we're going to click on the projects and then here you will check out the uh, to demo project that we have so we have title field this is you know the title we have the year it was done the company you did it for your role in the project the services you actually delivered and then you can have up to six featured images for each project um, if you want to for example if you're a web designer and this is a website you can put your website link here it will be previewed if you don't have a link simply delete this and it will not show up uh, and then we have just a short description slash overview now i wouldn't make this a super huge description just keep it like two three paragraphs max um, for best uh, practices so um yeah you can edit these uh, demo projects or you can add new uh, projects by clicking new item here and then just filling out these fields and in the end just click Control or command s to save it and now if we go back 
uh, you know, your projects will be um, displayed here. Okay, next up we have testimonials. Uh, so this template features text testimonials. If you do not have testimonials, the easiest thing that you can do is just select it. Make sure you have selected the main testimonials layer and just make it not visible in this way. You know, if you don't have testimonials, you hide it. And then when you get testimonials, you make it visible again and you put them in here. So to edit the actual testimonials, you will see that we have them here to the left of the screen. Reason being is because this is a ticker component, just like the client logos, you have to connect it to external items from the website. And how to edit these actual testimonials, you can zoom in, change the text, change the picture, the name here, and then uh, simply, um, you know, that will reflect the change. Let's say if you have only three testimonials, you can delete these ones. And then if you get a fourth one sometime in the future, you can select this main testimonial and hold down option or alt and then drag it away to duplicate it. And then just edit this, edit the title, the, the content, and then connect it. And this will add it into the testimonial ticker. Okay, next up, we have the about uh, section, which is pretty simple. If you watch the framework basics, you will know how to edit the text and the image here then we have the uh, work experience this is again a CMS item so to uh, manage those you need to go to the CMS go to the experience tab and then here you have uh, six example positions you can edit those you can delete them by right clicking and clicking delete you can add new experiences let's just add something for a demo um, so company hours 2024 in let's say 2026 or whatever if you go back you will see now that we have this uh, displayed right here and to edit the actual order of the um of the you know the, the items how they show up you need to drag them away here so the first item that will show up is the one that's at the bottom and the last one will be the first one so you can just drag drag it arrange it however you want it to uh, display here so that's for the experience. Uh, then we have the skills. So the skills, um, this is, you know, a pretty useful section to showcase what you're capable of. Uh, but for example, let's say if you do not, um, if you cannot use WordPress, you can select this box, make sure you have selected the skill wrapper and you can delete it. Um, if you wanna uh, delete another one, we can do it. If you wanna change the text, you can simply double click and change the text. If you wanna add a new skill, select the skill wrapper here from the layer menu and click Control or Command D as many times as you wish and then just change the text inside of it. So that's how you manage the skills. Uh, then uh, what we have is the blog. Um, so the blog, again, it's a CMS component. We already went over a few CMS collections. But same thing here, you can uh, manage the articles by clicking on them, filling out the fields, you can delete by right clicking and clicking delete. And to add a new blog entry, click new item, fill out all of these fields and this will um, automatically add it to your index. Uh, so the homepage shows the three latest articles that you have. And then um, we also have a dedicated blog page where you can show all of your articles. And finally, uh, on the homepage, we have the footer where we have a big CTA section, which actually, if we preview it, you see that we have this kind of slideshow of different projects. Um, now to change these images, simply you will see them here on the left side, simply go in, select these images and change them to something that you have created. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. Um, then we have this email placeholder here. Now you can change this to anything you want. You can put your name or whatever else. We have useful links, so you can edit those if you want. Contact, if you don't need a contact, simply select the contact layer and make it not visible. And this will leave you with just the links. Um, in, the, in the bottom we have the logo again. So here you can follow the same procedure as on the navigation part of this video and insert your actual logo. Uh, we have privacy policy and terms and conditions. If you do not have pages like this, you can simply, again, make them not visible. And social media to the right side, um, how to edit this. Simply click on the social media icon that you want to edit. And then here we have name and link. So YouTube, obviously you will link to your YouTube, but let's say you want to link your Instagram here. Just type in Instagram. This will change the icon and then here put in your Instagram um, link. If you want to add more social medias, select one of them and simply click Control or Command D to duplicate it. And then here, let's say you want to add again YouTube and just put in your YouTube link here. 
Um, so yeah, at the bottom you have the copyright notice here, just put your name and on the right side we have this design by Wise Text, which is actually a link to our website. Um, it will greatly help us if you leave it inside of your website, but I completely understand if you want to remove it. And if you want to remove it, I'll show you how to do it in the best way possible. Just select it, click delete, and then uh, select your copyright notice and make it center aligned so it looks nice and uniform. Um, so that's how you edit the footer. Um, so after the footer, what we have, we have the links page. Um, so the links page, it's a, it's a kind of like a link in bio replacement. So you can put this in your Instagram and your Twitter. And here you can link all of your ventures, uh, let's say your YouTube, your Twitter, your e-commerce store. And how you edit uh, these links is very simple. So you can select it. You have icon. Again, we're using Phosphor icons here, I believe. Let me actually double check. So yeah, we're using Phosphor icons. So you can go to Phosphor icons on Google, click on the link, explore the, their icons icons and plug in your the icon that you want to use here. We have title, which is this headline. We have the description where you can write a short single sentence. And finally, we have the link. So it's pretty simple. And then if we preview this, this is how the hover effect looks. So um, it's a pretty clean link in bio solution. Uh, if you have a podcast, you can link your Spotify podcast here. Just simply select the widget and put your uh, episode link here. If you don't have a podcast, select this podcast slash Spotify layer and simply hide it. Um, same thing for the YouTube. You can either paste your link here or if you don't have a YouTube, select the YouTube video um, layer and make it not visible. So that's how you manage the links page. Um, after that, we have a get started page, which features a Calendly, um, you know, a Calendly widget, which allows your clients to book in a call with you. Um, so to edit this, what you have to do is just log into um, Calendly, get your Calendly link. Give me a second to get mine so I can show you. So once you get your um, Calendly link, uh, you want to paste it inside of your browser and what we need to copy is everything after .com. So all of this we need to copy and if at the end you have, for example, um, let me see if it will show up. If you have this uh, the question mark month, you do not have to paste this in because if you do, it will only show the selected month. So all we need is just these two here. So after the first slash, and before the question mark, copy this, go back, calendar, paste it, and then this will plug in my calendar right in here. Um, so that's how you edit the uh, get started page. Okay, so block page, not much new we can edit here. It's simply um, through the CMS. You also have the block single where uh, you can, you know, style your block page. If you want to, you know, change the style, you can um, do it right here. Privacy policy, pretty simple. You can simply select it and enter your own privacy policy. Just keep in mind that this is not a legit privacy policy in terms and conditions. These are just placeholders from the internet. So um, if you're going to use them, please replace them with your real um, policies. And finally, we have 404 page. I wouldn't recommend for you to touch this because um, there's nothing to, nothing to touch here. It's simply a 404 page that when it's broken, people can go back to the homepage easily. So uh, this pretty much covers it. I think we went through everything. If you guys are facing any difficulties while customizing notebook or any other of our templates, you can go to wisetemplates.com and connect with us via our live chat. If we're not online, simply leave your email and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next video.